Have you ever wondered what it takes to forge an impregnable wall without bricks or mortar, or how celibacy and severed family ties could transform men into crusaders' shock troops? Picture this, razor-sharp katanas slicing through the air, each stroke a dance with mortality. Explore the untold stories of history's most fearsome warrior groups, the Spartans, Knight Templars, and Samurai. From brutal initiations in the wild to vows of celibacy and ritual suicide, discover the extraordinary length these warriors went to, transcending the battlefield to become legends. Brace yourself for a journey into the heart of courage, discipline, and the relentless pursuit of honor. Spartans, the impregnable wall. In the ancient world, where legends were forged in the crucible of battle, one group stood tall among the rest the Spartans. Known as the impregnable wall, they were not builders of physical fortifications, but masters of an unyielding phalanx formation, a human shield that struck fear into the hearts of their enemies. At the core of Spartan strength was a tradition as harsh as the unforgiving landscapes they hailed from. Picture this, a young Spartan, barely a man, armed with nothing but a spear, left to fend for himself in the wild. This was no ordinary trial. It was the brutal initiation into the Spartan Brotherhood, a test of resilience that separated the worthy from the weak. Survival in the wild meant more than just enduring the elements. It meant overcoming the savage challenges nature threw their way. Only those who emerged from this trial, marked by the scars of the wilderness, were deemed fit to join the ranks of the Spartan army. It was a testament to a society's unwavering commitment to producing warriors of unparalleled strength and resilience. The Spartan way was not for the faint-hearted. Young Spartan boys, barely adolescents, faced the harsh reality of the wild, armed with only a spear to defend themselves. They learned to navigate treacherous terrain, adapt to the unpredictability of nature, and confront the primal fears lurking in the shadows. It wasn't just about survival, it was about proving that they possessed the indomitable spirit required to become a Spartan warrior. In the crucible of the wilderness, bonds were forged between the young initiates, a brotherhood born from shared hardships. Those who returned, having conquered the wild, were not just survivors, they were the embodiment of Spartan strength. They had earned the right to stand shoulder to shoulder with their comrades in the phalanx, to be part of the impregnable wall that struck terror into the hearts of adversaries. This initiation was not a mere rite of passage. It was a sacred journey that sculpted the Spartans into the formidable force history would remember. It wasn't about the absence of physical walls around their city. It was about the human walls, the disciplined and unwavering phalanx that made the Spartans an impregnable force on the battlefield. The story of the Spartans, the impregnable wall goes beyond the battles they fought. It delves into the very essence of their existence. It's a tale of resilience, of young boys braving the wild to become the legendary warriors who stood as an unbreakable barrier against the tides of history. As we unravel the stories of the other fearsome warrior groups, remember that each carries its own unique saga of strength, sacrifice, and the indomitable human spirit. Number two, Knight Templars, Crusaders, Shock Troops. In the era of Crusades, when the clash of swords echoed through history, emerged a formidable force, the Knight Templars. Among the Crusaders, they were the Shock Troops, the embodiment of unwavering commitment, and their story begins not on the battlefield, but within the walls of a solemn order. These warrior monks bore a distinct mark, the Templar Cross, a symbol not just of their order, but of martyrdom, an emblem of the sacrifice they were willing to make. To be a Templar was no ordinary choice. It meant forsaking the comforts of family, the warmth of love, and the pursuit of material desires. Joining their ranks was no casual decision. The path to becoming a Templar was paved with the renouncement of worldly ties. Once a man took up the mantle, his connections to family were severed, as if cut by the blade of a knight's sword. The bonds that once defined him were replaced by the austere solitude of the Templar order. Yet, it wasn't merely a physical separation. It was a vow of celibacy, 
a solemn promise to forsake the intimate embrace of another. In a world filled with human connections, the Templars chose a solitary path bound by duty and devotion. Love, like the armor they wore, became a weighty luxury they willingly cast aside. Their commitment to the cause, to the Holy Land, was absolute. They became the shock troops, breaking the enemy lines with a fierce determination born not just from skill in combat, but from an unyielding adherence to a strict code. Each Templar carried the weight of their order's legacy on their shoulders, the cross on their chest a constant reminder of their sacred duty. The Templars were more than warriors. They were ascetics in armor, living embodiments of sacrifice. In their quietude, in their renunciation of human desires, they found strength. For these men, every battle was a step closer to martyrdom, a journey towards a higher purpose that transcended the temporal world. It was not just about fighting, it was about enduring. The Templars became a living paradox, warriors who embraced hardship as willingly as they did their weapons. The Clash of Swords was not just a symphony of battle, but a hymn to their unwavering commitment. As the Templars faced the tumultuous tides of the Crusades, their existence was defined by a profound sense of duty and sacrifice. The story of these warrior monks is not just a tale of battles won and lost. It is a narrative of resilience, discipline, and an unyielding spirit that echoes through the annals of history. And so the Templars marched forward, their cross shining in the blistering sun, a beacon of steadfast devotion in a world consumed by the chaos of war. Number 3. Samurai Warriors – Masters of the Sword In the ancient realm of feudal Japan, where cherry blossoms painted the landscape and honor was as sharp as a samurai's blade, there existed a legendary group of warriors, the samurai. These warriors were more than just masters of the sword. They were embodiments of discipline, commitment, and an unwavering code of conduct. Picture the scene, a dojo, where young samurai in training gathered to hone their skills under the watchful eyes of seasoned masters. The air was thick with the metallic scent of freshly forged katanas and the hushed murmurs of students immersed in meditation. These warriors weren't just physical experts. Their strength extended to a profound mental discipline. But what made the samurai truly fearsome wasn't just their skill with the blade. It was their relentless commitment to the art of war. Imagine a young warrior, a Bushido apprentice, spending countless hours perfecting the art of drawing a katana with swift precision. Each stroke was not just a physical movement, but a dance with mortality itself. For a samurai, facing death with unyielding composure was a part of the job description. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the training ground, the sensei gathered the warriors for a lesson that went beyond the physical realm. They were taught to meditate upon their own mortality, to embrace the inevitability of death with a clear mind. It wasn't about fearing death, it was about understanding it, making peace with it, and channeling that acceptance into a calm resolve on the battlefield. Failure for a samurai was not an option. This wasn't just about losing a skirmish. It was about dishonor, a stain on their very essence. The code of Bushido dictated that a warrior who failed in their assigned task had only one path to redemption, seppuku. Picture a solemn ceremony where the disgraced samurai, with stoic determination, would ritually take their own life to restore honor to their name. The ritual was not a gruesome spectacle, but a solemn affair, a display of ultimate dedication to the code. The samurai would sit in Caesar, wearing traditional garb, and with a steady hand, they would perform a precise cut across their abdomen. It wasn't an act of surrender, but a final act of control, a declaration that they owned their destiny, even in death. The tales of seppuku echoed through the centuries, marking the samurai as warriors who didn't just wield a sword, but embraced a way of life. Imagine the hallowed grounds where these rituals took place, where the spirits of fallen warriors lingered, and the very air whispered the names of those who chose honor over life. 
In the quiet of the night, as the stars painted the sky, the samurai's commitment to their code became a legend, a story of warriors who faced death unflinchingly, who turned the inevitability of mortality into a source of strength. The samurai weren't just fighters, they were poets of the battlefield, crafting their destiny with every stroke of the katana and every whispered breath of the wind through cherry blossoms. And that's it from this video. If you enjoyed watching this video, then you're gonna love this one. Click on the video on the screen right now and watch. Thank you.